He had made this extraordinary discovery. It was like a glint of gold after the First World War. So the whole of the world was focused on this one man. He loved High Clear and, he, and, he, and he, he loved the very comfortable Edwardian life here, but he also loved uh, travel and, and, and adventure. I mean, he had, there is a bit of an Indiana Jones style to that um, uh, portrait there of my great grandfather, and it rather perhaps sums up the, um, um, uh, the character. I'm often looking for why Lord Carnarvon um, was obsessed with Egypt, which he was. He was not just a financier, he was passionate about the country, and at that time, he inherited this house, Highclere Castle, Bretby, which was a house twice the size of this in Derbyshire, two houses in Somerset, beautiful estates, several houses in London, Barclay Square, Tenterton Street, and goodness knows what. So he left all this, which for most people might have been enough. <laughs> and he went and sat on a desert, on a dust heap, in a desert across from the Nile. So, that, to me, is part of what I find fascinating and want to explore. What makes men find the lost world, you know, the holy grail? What are we doing? <laughs> so, but he did it. He did it. Part of his um, quest in life was, was, was to be one of the early pioneer motorists, and he imported some cars from France. And he, be he became more and more adventurous with the speed of, the, of these um, um, exciting new, new toys and did have some, some scrapes. A bad one in... in, in um, Germany, where he managed to turn the car over at speed and, and um, nearly died. He was advised by doctors from, from then on to um, spend the winters in um, um, dry climates. It was a, a time of, of great learning and discovery and new technology, the Edwardian period. I mean, great-grandfather was fascinated by photography, even um, aviation, because he um, encouraged um, Geoffrey de Havilland to make his first flight from the land at, at, um, at Highclere. In 1910, Havilland got airborne for 150 meters. But the, the excitement of, of, of the learning of the, of the new ideas, technology going forward, was also matched by other areas with an excitement to understand the past. A lot of people went out to Egypt as part of the social um, life in Cairo, and that wasn't his interest at all. He'd have been bored stiff if he was just um, stuck doing that. So he. He soon got into the idea of um, travelling down the, the Nile. He really met Carter some years after he began his first um, excavations. He wasn't given very exciting sights, my grandfather at first. In his first year, he, he, he uncovered an enormous amount of stones, rubble and dirt, and all they found was a mummified cat and a nice cat coffin, which today sits in the Cairo Museum in the animal mummy section. But for many people, they might have been entirely put off being archaeologists and excavating. If you spend four months in heat, all you find is, is, is that. But actually, far from putting him off, that was a big excitement as far as he was concerned. Almina, Countess of Carnarvon, was, was, was um, officially um, um, Almina um, Wombwell. Um, but in fact, um, um, she was really Alfred Rothschild's um, uh, daughter, albeit um, Ill 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 illegitimate. But Alfred absolutely doted on her. She was his friend and partner and wife, and it started with these huge amounts of money and clearly developed into a great relationship. She went out on almost every excavation season with him, apart from the one in 1922 where she had terrible toothache and went to the dentist in Paris. But Armina was, was, was um, not, again, not one for sitting back and just um, enjoying life. She was absolutely a passionate devotee of, of medicine and, and nursing homes and hospitals and moving things forward in that way. And of course, Sir Alfred's um, massive financial backing helped sort things out um, at, at Highclere and allowed great-grandfather to devote his time to his activities um, um, in Egypt.